United States submarine base at Key West, Florida. A dispatch that quoted President Truman's press secretary, Charles Ross, as saying that President Truman has no knowledge of any secret project by this government that would give substance to the existence of such objects. Ross also said that both the Air Force and the Navy deny that such objects exist. <laughs> What the fuck is happening? I just accidentally <laughs> killed it. I don't know if this is what we record in one audio. <laughs> this is my keyboard. I'm gonna just put it over here. It is now. Oh my god. Wow. Now I'm nervous. Now I'm nervous that we're oh, gonna look. get this. It's recording. Jesus fucking Christ. Um, hey, what's up? My name is Noelle, and I almost, I almost had a stage 10 breakdown because Chelsea said she may have lost the Patreon episode. Yeah, it was a, it was a good long one too. Um, and yeah. I'm stressed out uh, because what's stressed just, out. What's your name? I'm stressed. I'm Chelsea, and I'm stressed. <laughs> um, uh huh. Do you want to explain why you're stressed? Well, because, because you, you normally manage this. this stuff, and then you got a new computer, and now you can't manage this anymore. So it all falls on me, and I'm stupid. <laughs> oh, that's it. That's why I'm stressed. I just I know the limitations of my own brain. Um, so for those who don't know, Chelsea is right. I used to manage this stuff, but my PC like died and because of crypto, um, the cost of a new graphics card has gone up exponentially and they're already super expensive. Like I bought my graphics card for almost four hundred dollars and now they're close to four four figs. Um, so fuck me. Uh, so I've been making Chelsea deal with it and that included, you know, like three weeks of Zoom calls showing her how to do certain things and and then she looks me in the eyes and says that she may have lost episodes and I fucking lose my shit. But it's okay. She didn't. She found it. I think. I think. I'm not going to listen to it. I'm going to just Jesus. throw it on up there. <laughs> it may be a retraining video for our jobs. <laughs> Watch it be. Uh, everyone's oh, like, I'm like, shit. okay, now you will click here. Uh-huh. <laughs> and- I, was, uh, I had to listen to one of your calls today and your fucking customer service voice makes me want to kill myself. Was it a good call? It was a good call. I think it was probably a hundred or 90 at least um, in the nineties, at least um, I'm the one who gave you the feedback. They all wanted to go soft on you. And I you said, stupid son of a bitch. I said, well, do you want my, I said, do you want my feedback for going above and beyond? And they go, yeah. And I go, well, this is what I would have done. And then they go, Oh, good point. You don't think I went above and beyond. Um, I, I'm not going to give you the feedback on the po- I'll give you the feedback on the podcast. Um, I, this I, person was well, before you, before, <laughs> before any of this goes on, I got, um, I'm just going to send you a Google doc of the response I sent to a customer today. Um, eight pages, single spaced. So when well, people no, want to know, the thing. here's the thing. The call was amazing. The call was great. You want my feedback, though, because I, I said, d- I well, didn't offer to birth said, their firstborn. <laughs> I said, well, Chelsea's an L2 and she wants to continue to grow in the company. So here's my feedback on what I would have done to go above and beyond. This person was struggling hard with how to add a additional piece of equipment, struggling so hard. And you helped them through it. The whole thing held their hand. Great teaching moments. Patience of a saint, right? To the point where I was like, incredible call. They said that this was only a temporary thing and that they were just waiting for the new batteries to come in so they wouldn't have to do this workaround, essentially, this temporary workaround. And then they continued to struggle with understanding things, but you helped them. You solved their problem. They said thanks. The call ended. My going above and beyond would have been a follow-up email to them saying, hey, you mentioned that. Once you get this shipment of additional batteries in, you will no longer need to do the setup we did. Here are the instructions on how to remove what we did when that happened so you don't have to call back in. Solve. I told him how to do that on the call. Yeah, but he was struggling. He and then I gave him my name so if struggling. he had any additional questions, he could ask for me directly. I think he was flirting with me on that phone call. He I, was. We also did talk about that. I <laughs> we could hear it in his we, voice. We all heard like, it. We all heard it. I don't know we if they hear it. my voice and the way that I'm speaking to them, but I think they imagine there that was, I'm like smoking hot. There was nothing about your voice to me that sounded hot. That You I were think, like, you sounded like a... Uh, a little bird who works the DMV. That's what you sounded like to me. Uh, some people are <laughs> into it. I think that, and then I know my customer service photo, for those of you who don't know, like our company takes like 
partner experience very seriously. So they get sent a photo of you. Which after, is so unfortunate. <laughs> and then they're like, what'd you think? Yeah. I look like a smoke show in my photo, but also it's in my Luna Love Good cosplay because hashtag professional and I'm holding my dog. And yeah. uh, it's like, how was your email to Chelsea? Because I'm like, they can't look me in my eyes while yeah. I'm wearing this giant lion helmet. And when you look like a helmet. child holding your dog and give you a one star. Yeah, I did get a one star recently, which is very bad in the Ooh. company. Guy asked for a supervisor. I call him, doesn't answer. I reach out and I'm like, hi, I saw that you wanted a supervisor, introduced myself, gave him the whole breakdown. My feedback, one star. Who? <gasps> that was it. That was his feedback. <laughs> oh, this is bullshit. Didn't respond to my email. <laughs> Didn't respond to the situation. I was like, fuck this guy. I was so, I had. 45 days of five star reviews. Yeah. Five stars through escalations, Dude. all this bullshit. One guy. Who? Yeah. And it I was a, n- it was a tier forget. one fucking ticket. And someone yeah. was like, Will you take it? They're asking about hardware. And I was like, Uh-oh. I'll do you a solid this one time. I will never fucking forget when I was like, I had never gotten like I had never gotten a one star. I was at like a hundred percent for months. Like it was this thing that the company kept talking about. And then I got one one star review and it wasn't even from it was from a customer not a partner they're fuckers and i was just like yeah i was torn to pieces i was shredded apart i was unconsolable i had multiple one-on-ones with my managers they were like it's not a big deal and i was like you don't understand i think the lowest (laughs) quality assurance score i got was maybe an 87 percent i ugly cried had an emergency <laughs> meeting with Eric and Nick. These guys were like really the top tops people in our team. And I was like, I need to know what I can do to stop being bad at my job. I just want to be good at my job. I have one goal and it's to be good at my job. And they're like, this is a great score. Don't be sad. Ugly crying. I got sent home early. Because of how bad I could not stop crying. You want to know how I know it was bad is that no one told me. No one told me. That's how I know I, it was bad. They were like, we got to keep this one internal. I am like yeah. the Patrick Bateman of customer service. Where I wake up and I'm showering. <laughs> I'm doing push-ups. You're I'm looking at everyone's business cards. business cards and you're yeah. like, hate the font. I'm hate the font. Fucking. <laughs> Oh man, that's so, dude. I I was right there with you, man. It would haunt me. It would haunt me. I had it printed out and on the bottom of my laptop as yeah. like my own personal like flagellation of like remember when you <laughs> sucked. <laughs> remember like, when damn. you sucked. <laughs> my, um, I get that, but um, I got. Let's anyway, stop talking about work. En- enough about terrible. work. Anyway, I'm so sorry, everybody. That's <laughs> how you know the tea. Oh man. Um, uh, anyway, love our jobs. Love the people we work with. Shout out to all of our coworkers who are listening right now. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. So if everyone's like, "Why the fuck is this girl?" It's until you ugly cry over like an eighty-seven <laughs> percent. Don't yeah. don't talk to me. Yeah, it's that's fucking rough. <sighs> anyway, uh, we still have to do an extra episode because Chelsea decided to like get fake. I COVID. I had started on the script don't tell them for one if you want to record it tomorrow it should be done tomorrow if you're yeah. down for that okay yeah we'll do it we'll do a double we'll do a double everyone yeah. gets a little halloween treat I, uh, everyone gets a little yeah halloween treat i was being too much of a bitch to record when i didn't feel good so uh no dog you sounded like shit i'm glad you didn't so we just have to double up this week anyway let's talk about more i don't you know the story right no this isn't you don't Oh my god! I'm driving today. You're you wrote the script. I I thought heard, that you no. I heard about this, researched it for thirty seconds. Went this is great. Sent it to you, and then I caught the goddamn plague, Noel. I mm. it might be related. We'll get into it. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm okay. I'm excited to be driving this. I thought that you knew. I'm assuming you know a little bit. Um, right. Also, bummer for me because fucking rough. I'm gonna I'm gonna choke on these names, dog. Um, I, but anyway, you're dumb for not typing the names phonetically, which is what I did last episode. Um, 
a, f- a few of them I did, but some of them I didn't because, like, I was so neck deep in this research that I was convinced that w- I would be able to, like, say the names correctly by just reading them. But that was last week when I thought we were going to do this. Not this week when I forgot the yeah, names. Yeah, my bad. For those of you who so, don't know, we were going to do this last week. And then I came in. I'm like, we got to talk about the Mongolian uh, yeah. cryptid. Anyway, so, my bad. So I'm not sure if we want to call this a real life monster or not. Um, because like I still haven't really like decided how I feel about this case. Um and I'm I'm cur- we'll just we'll debate it at the end. Because yeah. like I'm I'm willing to get your feedback on it because <sighs> it's tough. So let's meet the Chanduat family, which is that is the correct that is the correct the name. Um the second name is what I struggle with. Also known as the, mm, I would the, just say Batya, Batya, Bata? like Katya, but Batya. You know what I mean? Yeah, I almost just sang the song, yeah. but I won't. Katrina, your dad <laughs> calls me um, Katya. Anyway, but um, them. That was like the the neighborhood name for them. Yeah, they lived in Barari, which is a city inside of Delhi, India. They lived here for 22 years, but were originally from Rajasthan, India. These are all correct names, okay? It's that, we get. that sounds. That's how I would have pronounced. This it. is all real. It's when we get into the names of the family that I'm gonna start. Uh, and I'm gonna start. Uh, that I'll While have you the probably. names sound easy to say, a lot of these are written a real mouthful. Yeah, they're not it just, as simple. As- yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> It looks rough, but well, it's just like I just don't want to fuck them up. I know how personally offended I get when people fuck up my name, so like you know, I resonate with it. I'd rather just not try. Um, anyway, in Rajasthan, they were farmers, but the patriarch of the family, Bhopal, sold most of his farmland and cattle and decided to start moving the family into the city of New Delhi. At first, it was him, his wife, and their youngest son, Lalit. 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 It's Lalit. I wrote Holly. it phonetically. I yeah. had to read my notes. Right. <laughs> I was, I was just, this is preschool level recording here. <laughs> I was free balling off the just top of my head. Sound it out. I forgot how to say his name. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they moved to New Delhi. They opened a market that was run on the bottom floor of their home, which was three stories, ballin, um, and opened a plywood shop shortly after. Pretty soon, 11 family members would be living in that house. Sons, daughter-in-laws, grandkids, generations living together. And this neighborhood that they lived in was lucky to have them. They became known as, and like this might be an unfortunate translation, but, but the neighborhood called them Mommy and Daddy. I don't know why it bothers me when people say Daddy. Like, uh, do you know? I would rather hear, uh, what do you call your parents, Mom and Dad? Mom and Dad. Yeah. I use daddy, but not to someone I'm related to. I you know use, uh, I like to use zaddy when I'm just uh, talking about like hotties on the internet. I'll use zaddy when I'm being like a cunt. Like if I'm making yeah. fun of someone, I'm like, damn zaddy. Um, I, but- I don't call anyone daddy unless I'm trying to make the conversation uncomfortable. Yeah, it's uncomfy. It's or- uncomfy. I do feel like the sex community has taken the word daddy. And they've removed it from a father figure. To, yeah, I agree. I yeah, um, daddy traitor. Yeah, daddy. I only really use to describe like Nicolas Cage or anyone else who would, I would. I would yeah. let like send me the you up text. Yeah, and I would answer Oscar it. Isaac, daddy. You know, not 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 that but different context here. Anyway, yeah, he's in love to them. Not my father. <sighs> yeah, I would call them mother and father before I said mommy and daddy. Yeah. Daddy. Um, yeah, not as much of a fan. I'm just We're not really here to kink shame, but we'll kink shame <laughs> I'm calling your parents mommy and daddy. <laughs> yeah. You call your father daddy, seek help. Yeah. Anyway, peace and love. <laughs> but anyway, they were known as mommy, daddy, uh, because, <laughs> because they um, helped like babysit all the children. They gave out tea and snacks to workers and even their children and like their children's children were regarded in the same way. Respectful, helpful, academic. The family was fucking crushing it. 
despite, and this will come back, despite a robbery gone wrong in 2004 where Lalit was badly burned and injured from having sheetrock fall on him um, and being lit on fucking fire, ending in him no longer speaking. The he got was burned doing- bad enough that he couldn't speak or he was so traumatized that he never spoke again. I think it was more of a traumatized thing. I'm not, like, this is the, I was trying to look up a few articles about, like, the accident that happened in 2004 with him. Because I was, like, looking at pictures of the family and I didn't see any, like, visible burns where they talk about how badly burned he was. And I was like, was this, like, a burn injury or was it, like, a head injury from the shoe rock that, like, or was it just trauma? I'm just going to go ahead and say say a mixed bag. It could, yeah. Passion mixed bag. Um, my father was lit on fire in like a huge explosion and he does not look like a burn victim, but I credit that to the fact that we had the university of Utah hospital. Um, I'm not that privy on healthcare in India, but, uh, great. It's great. They have some of the best in like in, sure. in Delhi, some of the best. So I yeah. bet that's probably what it was, but either way, something happened to him during that robbery where he was fucking lit on fire and had she rock fall on his head that he just didn't speak anymore. I, yeah. but I get it. I probably wouldn't. But besides that, the family was doing really well in her personally. The store was really popular. People would line up outside at 6 AM waiting for it to open. Like they were, will. <laughs> literally like the goodwill bins uh-huh. shout out patreon episode that may or may not be there um, they were a staple to the community the entire family but in 2007 the patriarch bopal passed away i think it was like of a respiratory issue oh, nothing nothing like violent yeah the family held guided prayers after bopal's death And this type of guided prayer has a very specific name that I would totally butcher if I even tried, so I didn't even bother to write it. Um, But this type of prayer lasts for 10 days. Okay. So it's just um, mourning with instructions. Yeah. It's like, yeah. The family was fucking crushed, um, and they had to, they chose to do this specific type of lead prayer that goes on for extended periods of time to kind of like help them through it. Okay. And wouldn't you know a moment of somewhat divine light happened after years of essentially being nonverbal, Lalit began to chant with the prayer leader and the family is fucking shook, but they join in with his chanting. He's doing like an ohm chant. And how could they not? Could you imagine? No, like, the, the patriarch of the family who took the family from, like, rural areas into the city has brought so much, like, success and wealth and just, like, overall good fortune, good vibes, just community glue that doesn't even exist anymore, right? Yeah. And is bringing not only himself and his immediate family up, but the family families. Like, it's, yeah. he's generationally picking everyone up with him. And he passes, like... I can't even imagine what that's like, like what that's like for that household, like an entire house of 11 people mourning that together. Um, And to feel such like horrific pain and like lack of guidance and understanding that you have like someone come in and try to help the family. And then like all that's happening, your nonverbal brother starts talking for the first time in fucking years. Yeah. Well, especially like being lit on fire is like a huge trauma that you don't get over and the people around you don't get over. I still sit on an aisle seat to this day at the movie theater um, after seeing what my dad went through. So it's like that happens. And then the glue of the family is gone. And then you have all these people ruminating in, in this trauma and then somebody speaks and you, I'm assuming I haven't read forward. Um, I'm assuming they're going to attribute cause of to course. why this would all of a sudden, yeah. Of course. Um, and, like, you can't blame them. Like, no, not at all. The family's fucking shook to the core. Um, and as the community mourned the death of Bhopal, they were seriously worried about the family, almost expecting a cataclysmic dismantling. But quite the opposite happened. The family I, started to flourish. I would have expected... Uh, cataclysmic dismantling as a realist yeah perhaps yeah as like as would i like 
I, I, I get it. Like this, the community was essentially being like, stores are going to close. Like yeah. the family's going to fall apart. People are going to move out. Like what's going to happen? We don't know. How do we help? Da, 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 da. And rather than that, the family just fucking took off. They were doing well before. They're doing even better now. We love, we love to see it. Truly. Um, and while not an extreme in Hindu culture and religion, they just kind of went all in with scheduled prayer, eating vegetarian, no drinking or smoking. For those in school, grades got even better. And for those in the workforce, success was almost unmeasurable. I mean, that's, that's amazing. I wish that was my life after parental death. But, you yeah. know, um, well, some people mourn in different ways, and let's talk about why, because there's a reason yeah, why. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a reason why. Lalit didn't just have a Little Mermaid finding your voice moment. He took over the helm of the family and ruled it with a bit of an iron fist. How? You might be asking yourself. Oh. I, I am asking how, because, like, he was supposed to be this demure mute. Yeah. Well... It's because he told the family, and the family was convinced of it as well, that his ability to speak came from Bhopal inhibiting his body. Oh, there it is. You know. And whoop, there it is. <laughs> we can't go this entire episode without pointing out that Bhopal is reminding me so much of RuPaul. Just in <laughs> that's And that's hard. what I'm thinking this whole time. Just like dad cat, kitty, voguing. Cat, cat, kitty, cat, cat. <laughs> just voguing down the runway. Every time you say it, I'm like, Bhopal, oh but with the little, like, uh, yeah. little dot on his forehead. Yeah, but that's RuPaul. Him. Yeah, but he's, <laughs> <laughs> that's anyway. literally him. Um, but uh, how could they deny him? I mean, like, yeah. Your, your brother who was fucking burned and traumatized and beaten speaks for the first time in years at like your dad's essentially like memorial service mm -hmm. and he starts just like with these essentially 10 commandments yeah like you're gonna and then and then it's not even just bullshit because it's proving results yeah you know what i mean like everyone's fucking thriving when they listen to him so like yeah of course they're gonna be like yeah yep it's for sure him it's gotta be well, that seems like a very him. patriarchal thing to do not even gonna let death stop him i mean I'll take his voice. He's not using it. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I've believed similar things. Uh, <laughs> so I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of buying into it. I think maybe it's just like a very focused trauma response at this point, but I could buy it. You yeah. could sell it to me and I would pay. I, I would buy it on sale right now. Okay. I'd buy it on okay. Sale not right full now. price, but sale. not yet. Okay. So, Lalit now spoke and the rules and regulations he put into place when Bhopal would take over his body was making the family thrive. This did come with them being a little more introverted, mostly from the strict schedules they now had to follow that he, like, put in place. But, you know, potentially a red flag. They also kept this a secret. That is surprising because I feel like religious miracles, when you do hear about an entire community accepting them, tends to come from India. Mm -hmm. Like when little kids have what we would deem a birth defect over there, it's like a deity almost. Yeah. So I was actually talking to a um, friend and listener. Where's – what's their username? It's like Lord – Am I going to say it wrong? Probably. I mean, if we're shouting out listeners right now, I want to shout out uh, Brendan for the hot tip. This has nothing to do with the episode, but um, Inside Job on Netflix gave us a hot tip. Okay. How would you pronounce that? Uh, show it to me again. I'll type it out. I want to say it's, I want to say Syria, but that sounds wrong. I'm also illiterate and dumb. My eyes crossed. I was going to say Soraya. I um, watched oh, their... Soraya might be it. Okay, so um, a listener did reach out. What was what was their well, name? Well, no. I reached out. You to, reached out. I reached oh, out to them. okay. Because they have a, like, TikTok where they dig into kind of their cultural 
okay. issues and news and talk really open with it. Um, I wonder if their username is the same on TikTok. God, well, Lord Soraya on Instagram, maybe the same on TikTok. Don't quote me on it. Um, but I messaged them because as you were talking about, like in India, there's this phenomenon that kind of happens with people who claim to be um, like divine and they're called, I think it's called like a Baba, 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 but they're, they're self-proclaimed like God talking to people. Mm -hmm. Um, And some of them are like believed and regarded by everyone as like, yep, they're for real. They're the real deal. And then some of them are like essentially scammers on YouTube making like these crazy videos and like advertising all over the place. It's a wild phenomenon. And um, it's, it is, it's some people wanted to point that to this, right? Okay. Yeah. That Lalit is like a Baba that he was having this, like, he is a self-proclaimed like speaker of God and divineliness. Um, okay. But I think that argument starts to fall apart when we get into the thick of the story. Also, I just want to shout out to this user. They sent us a Zoom, I guess it was a Zoom link to their wedding uh, or their ceremony. Um, and it was beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah. I It was gorgeous. Also, I made uh, coffee and Hannah. I watched it. Yeah, I made coffee Hannah and I watched obsessed. it uh, and I enjoyed it thoroughly. I've never seen anything like that uh, because we only absorb a certain type of wedding ceremony here where we're from and uh i've never seen anything that isn't like traditional white dress so thank you for sharing that with us yeah didn't it make you so jealous i was like god it did it made me think about uh my own wedding and if i should go with the wwe theme some are like yo you're not even engaged yet and i'm like shut up wedding needs (laughs) son if there is anyone who would skip the engagement and go straight to the wedding it would be you guys so yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I saw their wedding back. and was definitely like, okay, maybe I'm on board with, with wedding ceremonies. You know, I think, I think flip taking in the idea of a ceremony and making it be what you want it to be um, for you specifically, I think would be great. If you want to like make a fucking cow's heart out of vegan jello and then you want to consume it and then like shit it out on your spouse's chest in front of like your family and friends i would like who's to say that isn't (laughs) yeah that isn't great you know i appreciate it i um with age i i do this is my this has always been my problem god we're so off topic and we're about to get so morbid um that's fine I love the pageantry, dude. You know this. Yes. I love pageantry and I love dressing up. I love a good party. And at the end of the day, if I was to participate in a marriage ceremony or a ceremony in which two people agree that they're doing it, whatever, um, I would want it to have those elements. Yeah. I tend to separate out, oh, super off topic. I tend to separate out the legality and the ceremony. Legally, I'll just go to a courthouse. Do I want a party where I'm the center of attention and I get to um, hit my partner over the back with a metal chair? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Does it have to be legal? Not my concern. Yeah. None of my business, frankly. I'm technically already married to Ichabod. It's true. I don't feel like getting divorced. So don't bring legalities into a marriage, you know? No. Um, So anyway. But yeah, so back on topic, in back India, topic. this tends to be a lot more culturally accepted to the point where people can even be scammed off of these, yeah. these babas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, that was a little bit of the talk, but I, I think we'll all agree that, you know, it's probably not like what was happening here. <sighs> so, but the whole, this all came about because they kept um, Lalit becoming Bhopal a secret, essentially. Like, what, I mean, if we want to call that a red flag, let's call it a red flag. Um, red might be my favorite color. <laughs> they they just weren't sharing that information. But Which I feel like it's, it's surprising for that area, but maybe I just don't know enough about it. I would personally keep it secret here. 
I would personally keep it secret too because I would be like, people are going to talk shit. But for that area, I would say it maybe is a little out of pocket that they're like not yeah. sharing it, but who knows. Um, so 11 years pass, like 11 years that, after Bhopal's death. I know. And the family continued to be successful. They continued to grow their community. They even opened a new business. And in July of 2018, they were planning a big, beautiful wedding. And that's for sure totally it. Nothing weird happens next. Great time for me to take a bathroom break because my partner brought me a literal jug of wine. Do you need Uh, to go take a bathroom break? How about you read this next part and I will go pee real quick. No, I need you for the next part. Okay, okay. I'll hold it. I'll hold it. No. I'm too scared to pause. (laughs) All right, I'll pause it. Okay. And with the magic of editing... We're back. <laughs> um, so, yeah, nothing weird happens next. I would assume uh, nothing weird happened ever. And that's yeah. the end of it. Yeah, that's the end of the story. That's what we're only talking about. Other than the fact that all 10 family members were discovered hanging in their living room on July 1st of 2018. So, uh, you know, wedding in July, but right at the jump of July, they just, all off themselves. Yeah, and I'm going to give you the names and ages of everyone. Good luck. That's your time. Chelsea, you go. Oh, I have to pronounce it? Yep. Okay. (laughs) That good luck was for you. You son of a bitch. Uh, So Lalit, 45. Mm -hmm. His elder brother, Bhavnesh Singh, 50. That sounds right. That sounds right. Does it? Uh, Their respective wives, Tina, 42, and Savita, 48. The children, Nitu, 25. Monu, also known as uh, Manika, 23. Dhruv, also known as Dushnyat, 15. Oh, I don't think I did that one very well. <laughs> and Shivam. Uh, I'm going to actually say Shivam. Shivam. I don't, uh, uh, Shivam 15. sounds right. And then their um, sister, Pratiba, alias Baby, and her daughter, uh, Priyanka, age 33. Yeah, and she was 48. Yeah, uh, Pratiba was 48. So uh, this... <clears throat> when you, this is kind of all across the board because when you tend, to, in my opinion, when you tend to see cult deaths, they all tend to be kind of, well, I, you know what I'm about to, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm surprised by the ages because it seems like you have people simultaneously who would know better and people young enough to have been indoctrinated into TikTok social media culture where they have enough experience with the outside world to know when something doesn't smell right. Yeah, within their own culture, so that is surprising. Um, I don't think TikTok was out in uh 2018, I think it was still <laughs> musically, but that's um, you know, a different story. But I agree with you completely, and that's something we could kind of talk about in a second. Um, before we carry on, they were found hanging in a circular formation, blindfolded, gagged with surgical tape, with their limbs tied up. They also, were like completely virgin suicides. Essentially. They had a time and a method and they went with it. Yeah. The family matriarch, here you go, Chelsea, another one for you. <laughs> Narayani Devi, age 77. That sounds right. Okay. Um, was found strangled to death on her bed. That's weird. That's weirder than the group suicide. So. On its own, very sus. Yeah. Uh, with well, the group suicide, I'm very, that's full on suspicious. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. We'll 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 talk about how they were found and all that good stuff in a second. Okay. Let's talk. I'm highlighting so I know where we stopped. Let's talk about uh, the ages here. Like, what do you think is happening? Because it it's crazy that you have ages ranging from 77 to 15, which is super fucking tragic. Obviously, the whole thing is tragic, but like the gamut of ages is wide. And um, it, I agree with you. That in any other situation, you would say there are people old enough and young enough to say, hey, you guys, something's going on. Each gender. Yeah, it's I mean, I know Jonestown, uh, that was like all across the board, but those people were forced into it. So that's where you see some of the age stuff. I don't know too much about the ages of other cult deaths, but I always felt like they were at least kind of similar. Um, I'm I'm surprised by the family stuff because I'm always kind of shocked when a parent's, 
um, intrinsic caveman hardwiring allows them to kill their children specifically mm-hmm. yeah. um, or allow any harm to come onto them. I'm yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know what to make of it just by looking think, at their ages. I think I'm, I think I'm going to give you some paint for your paintbrush here in a second. Okay. <clears throat> It unfortunately was a neighbor and family friend who found them when the shop had a line of its daily customers waiting for the store to open at 6 a.m. sharp, as it has for all Okay, now I know. They didn't want to get up at 6 a.m. anymore. <laughs> yeah, now it actually, you know what? Figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> the neighbor let it go for an hour or two, but went to the front door when no one was answering their phones. After banging on windows, he checked the door, which to his surprise was unlocked. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that is where he discovered the circle of hanging bodies. He ran out and called police. Could you imagine? What would be your first thought? It's cryptic because seeing a hanging body is wild in itself. Seeing one hanging body. Seeing one hanging body. You're like, whoa, shit. Suicide. Yeah. Seeing an entire family hanging in a circle. I don't know what to think. Bound Um, and gagged. That, yeah. I would think murder. Mm-hmm. I would think murder. Yeah. I would yeah. no longer think suicide when I saw yeah. the group of people, especially if they were gagged and bound. Bound and gagged. Bound, gagged, and blindfolded. In Every, the circle, like, I would I would default to some sort of satanic or religious type, culty type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, the Satanism of it would be like my caveman indoctrination, but that would probably be my first thing of like what religion – dark religion are these people practicing that would be my first thought Mm -hmm. i think you're fairly spot on um with that i think where the wrench gets thrown in is when they are blindfolded gagged and bound with their hands behind their backs that's where people get thrown a little off i would think that they were murdered at that point yeah that's i would be like some sort of religious murdering yeah an officer an officer was um (laughs) He was shortly on the scene because he was in the area and he was just a beat beat cop, which sucks for him. Um, and um, by the time he got to the house, which was within within minutes, honestly, like the block had gathered around. And I want to point out here, like I'm not sure if people were going in to see it, but everyone knew what the scene was by the time that con- cop or constable um, Toma showed up. I'm um, telling I- everybody. Like they uh, all yeah. fucking dead in there. Yeah, and like sp- the specifics of it, like the yeah. he he knew what he was about to see. Um, okay. This is direct quote from him. It was shocking. I stayed for uh, for blah, blah, blah. I stayed only for ten to fifteen seconds before rushing downstairs. He puked um, uh. to call my seniors. At the time, I did not see whose hands were tied and whose eyes were covered. I just saw a lot of bodies hanging, just like branches of a tree. In my career of 17 years so far, I have never seen a crime scene like this, and I hope I do not ever have to. So, as you said, they were bound and gagged. Clearly a cut and dry serial murder case. That would be my first thought, 100%. Um Especially since the main matriarch was like strangled, I would be like, yeah. I don't know, maybe that's some yeah. type of like uh, in room. Yeah, maybe that's like some type of cultural thing where the matriarch is respected, so they're not displayed that way. Yeah. Well, um, well, I, I would agree with you too, probably, except for the fact that investigators found eleven diaries, some dating back to Bhopal's death scribbled with instructions and notes detailing the situation <sighs> written by none other than Lalit as he was possessed by his father. So decades in the making. Yes. That entire 11 years they were, he was like creating um, rituals and schedules and rules and regulations. And he was scribing it all. It was all documented. Um, um, that's terrifying. Um, we've covered a lot of things that I genuinely have not been scared of, but this situation is terrifying to me. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. It's um, crazy. So uh, yeah. uh, get buckle in. Okay. <clears throat> what, happened, <clears throat> what happened leading up to the night of June 30th, because that's when they actually died versus when they were found in the first, Yeah. was recorded in detail in the diaries. 
The family was prepping for a banyan tree worship as directed by Bhopal via Lalit for the betterment of the family was the reasoning. They, for weeks, maybe months, they would practice binding themselves. Um, the night on June 30th, two women of the family would be seen on security cam footage bringing home the step stools they would use to stand on and hang themselves with. Mm. So they that's why they were bound and gagged. They were practicing it. They were practicing how to do it themselves. But the banyan tree ritual wasn't a death ritual. No way. It I'm was, trying to look up like how it's normally worshipped. Yeah. And I'm not seeing anything that women tie threads around the tree. That's really the only thing in my very rudimentary search that I'm seeing where any yeah. type of cloth in strips is utilized. Um, also, like if anyone's been to Maui and Lahaina, they have a banyan tree. It's a very kind of like creepy tree when you look at it. It's got all of these like veiny, long, tr like trunks that look mm -hmm. like vines coming out and like dripping down. It's it's very eerie. Um, it's a very religious looking tree. It, it's and religious in the sense of like old religion. Like it looks very pagan or like yeah, horse. it definitely does look pagan. And like this was this was all like um, I it not Bhopal, but Lalit, like this was all his, he was making up these rituals. He was like DIYing this. And he was just, they were just scooting along, getting like step stools, not using shit they already had, not using yeah. chairs that I know they owned for every person who lived there. Yeah. They were procuring yeah. step stools so that everybody yeah. would be the same. Yep. Okay. Um, but it wasn't a death ritual. It was going to bring Bhopal back in the flesh. That's why they left the door unlocked, to make it easier for him to get in. By doing this ritual, it would generate enough power to make Bhopal walk in the door, remove the nooses from their necks, untie their hands, and be reunited with his family again. As they took a step off their ladders, bound, gagged, and noosed up, they did it willingly and thoroughly believed they'd survived and be saved. Remember the mom in the bed? Mm-hmm. Too old to do her own binding and gagging and hanging. That's why she was laying down for her sons to do it for her. So before I get into the last sad sentence, what do you think about that? I Okay, so if you really, on paper, Blue Paul is already brought back from the dead, just not in his own tangible body. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, would, I would chalk this up to a very sinister thing at this point. If I was going to buy into the fact that this Boo Paul person um, was possessing the son, I would think of it as just like he's driving the car and I would take it for what it is. The second that it was like bringing back to the flesh, that's where you get into like what necromancy. Mm -hmm. And that's where um, I feel like even a religious person would kind of halt. I wonder what kind of hold uh Bhopal had on this well, family before it would be they like, died. Yeah. I mean, they, well, whether we want to say <clears throat> Lali or Bhopal, they both like so Bhopal is like old school in a sense, but he was like a super kind and like giving and compassionate, but like strict authoritative person. Mm -hmm. Kind of that like you know when like it's that super harsh dad role, but then he's like very soft to his. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like firm when you get to but know fair. Him. Yeah, exactly. Firm but fair. That's definitely what you would say about Bhopal. And then Lalit, like when he went to university, like his friends would be like he was like the the jokester. He was like super academic, like amazing grades, funny, smart, just a cool guy. Like there was nothing off about him. Like so a totally had the, fucking fun dude. But at the very least, he had charisma then. So like that's the one thing we see with cult leaders is just yeah. Like but then he stopped charisma. talking for years. I I and wonder I how long I, this con was. I would who say killed that the dad. <laughs> respiratory issues. I wouldn't. Yeah, like a pillow over his fucking head. <laughs> Lalit's been playing the long con here. I don't. I wouldn't say that Lalit had charisma. He was just not an outcast. Like, he yeah. was just an average guy. Just and a like, well-adjusted young man. Yeah, just a okay. well-adjusted guy. Like, he wasn't, like, the cool dude that everyone wanted to hang out with, but he was just, like, a guy. He was just, like, you know, around. It's not a situation where you would look at, like, Manson or Bundy or even, like, um, Gacy, like, these people who had a following. 
mm-hmm. and were able to like entrance people and deceive people in that way. He didn't have any of those qualities. There wasn't like narcissism and charisma fueling him. Um, I mean, at least like that everyone could pick up on even when Maybe looking back it, on the story. He obviously had enough of it to like get his own family in. I mean, he had enough to lay a trap for those closest to him. And who knows if he would have, if they would have been more open about his position, maybe he just didn't talk to the community about what he thought he was because he needed his family on board to talk about it. And that's the only reason why he didn't claim more victims. I mean, I, this is, but this is the problem though, is like, I do genuinely think and well, th- this is where I wanted to talk to you, and I yeah. assume that you are now thinking of the of the mindset that Lali is like a monster. But I, there's a part of me because it went on for like eleven years before they got to this ritual part that thinks like he really did believe, and so the case was closed as like there's a technical term for it, but it's basically group psychosis that the entire family was under this like collective psychosis belief. And there's a part of me, even though that usually I will never agree with like a verdict given on a, a mass death, suicide or murder. I kind of agree with, I truly do think that like there's parts of the story that make me think Lolly is a fucking monster and he is like a serial killer. There are parts of that. Um, and there, there are parts that make me think that he was just, he was buying what he was selling, that he yeah. was under such delusion that he really did think that he was his father, Bo Paul. And I, when yeah. he started getting the results from the like crazy things he was coming up with, he was just reinforcing his already like he was being enabled. Things. Yeah, exactly. Like by I mean, himself, essentially. When Dad died, no one was driving the bus, and the least qualified person to take the wheel took the fucking wheel. Yeah, and it just took. They were just lucky enough that it took him eleven years to crash, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I would buy that. I also buy into that group psychosis. We see group psychosis all the time. Another really good example of a type of group psychosis is the fucking bystander effect. Yeah, exactly. It happens all the time. And there's like every day. There's also there's an aspect to this that like makes me think that like the group psychosis trauma thing is a big thing to play because. I would argue that they never mourned the death of Bhopal. To them, Bhopal never died. And I think living with that and truly believing it in your heart of hearts and yet going about your day without that person there physically, it's like this fighting of reality and delusion. And I think when you're having that constant battle, it's almost like you're putting yourself, I I, I would say that's how they all got into this, psych, this group psychosis is because they essentially like, astral projected themselves into it like yeah by having those two things compete every day of reality and delusion well, oh i agree lines began will, to be blurred and lali is cosplaying as by paul i keep saying boo paul i yeah. may not stop yeah. um but oh, paul. they he's cosplaying this for 11 years and it's mm-hmm. always like oh if you call someone something enough times they'll start to believe it and really they were just reinforcing their own belief mm-hmm. even if they didn't buy into it at first after 11 years that habit has to become so fucking hardwired that you can't separate habit from reality like maybe they're like we'll just endear him right now like mm-hmm. it's not worth the fight so even if they weren't really into it after 11 years you, you you're buying what they're selling. And I think that that's probably what happened where even those who were like, it's not really dad mm-hmm. after 11 years, like where, where do you start? Yeah. Separating yourself from that reality that has been created. Yeah. And there's like a part of me that like, if he was doing like kind of violent, weird things in the time leading up to it, I would agree that he's like a monster, but the fact that it went, it like that wasn't really there is really sus to me. Yeah. Um, I don't know what made him get to this point, and I think that's the most um like curious thing about the case is like he writes about the ritual and what needs to be done and how they're getting ready for it and how they're practicing for it and like the cause and effect of it. 
And I do really think that he thought that his dad would walk in the door and save them all. Um, but I don't know what's not clear is the jump yeah. from um, dad says that we need to be vegetarian and not drink and smoke. Awesome. To dad says we should group hang ourselves. Well, then we're going to get into like more of the supernatural area of was this a real possession or not? You know, like if you show me someone who's essentially in a walking coma, Mm -hmm. all of a sudden be able to function in society, I'm going to want to know why. If I don't have a scientific explanation for it, then I'm in humans have done this since the dawn of time. They're going to attribute some sort of magic to it. And whether that magic is religion or whatnot. So is this a real possession? I do believe that India um, does take possession very, very seriously. And the way that a culture believes about something does shape their reality. So maybe what the fuck possessed possessed yeah. him was it dad um, or was it something else yeah a lot of people like to look at this case and say um like black magic black ritual magic i would i would buy into that um i mean the ability to convince every single person cuz it's not like lalit survived he also yeah. died with them like it's it's interesting. Um, and I know the way that you go about drafting an episode is very different from mine. I would have wanted to go into like the supernatural or even religious aspect of it to see if like, well, how far they buy into possession here. You know that I don't really believe in it. So I know that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> that would have been my first thing <sighs> is to go into possession, find things that explain it. Um, so just for the sake of the episode, I'm going to go the possession route. I think, yeah, I think you should. I'm not I, I saying love... it's dad. Mm -hmm. You think it's like a demon? I think it's something serving a selfish purpose. And I don't think dad, mm -hmm. just knowing what I know about him, would do something as selfish as try to put his family in danger to bring himself back. Yeah, that's fair. So that's I'm going to go possession route. Okay. Um, let's talk some more sad facts. Yeah. Um, there is evidence to suggest the youngest boys who were both 15 realized this was actually not the fucking plan as there were signs uh, of them the little, to, the littles did the two 15 year olds try to yeah. get out of it. Yeah. They tried, there were signs That's of them terrible. trying to untie their binds and get out. Um, here's some quotes from the print India online news, news yeah. publication. They describe the three story house as nice and spacious. And then there is the fact that the rent is dirt cheap, driven down by the, quote, horror house tag it now courts. Fuck. A neighbor said it, quote, has taken us a lot of time to deal with the incident. Even now, when we pass by the house, the flashbacks come. Horror or not, the situation is definitely scary. For a lot of time, we avoided the route and went from the other end of the road. Many asked us how we plan to survive here with all the talk about ghosts and spirits, but we can't live with superstition. The neighbor said the family moved in here. So it gives us all courage, but the holes in the walls are still scary. It will never be the same here. The holes the neighbor was referring to remain one of the deepest mysteries surrounding the house. The family's house had 11 pipes protruding outside in a bizarre, irregular manner through one of the walls facing an empty plot. And again, remember, 11 people died in the house. To add to the mystery, they were not found connected to any water inlet or outlet. The fact that there were as many pipes as bodies led to rumors that the family had had them installed as channels for their spirits, even though the family's carpenter, who now lives in the home, claims they were meant for ventilation. Bullshit. And they were removed. The pipes were removed, which is why they're now just obviously the holes that they talk about. Um I Off thought I had added it in here, but people do live in the house now. Um, it's like two families live in it, and then there's a they run a business out of the second floor. I will say that if 11 pipes for 11 bodies has to have a purpose, whether or not they told the family's carpenter what that purpose is, they may have just said it's ventilation. If that's a lie I needed to tell myself to sleep at night, I would buy that hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> um, but I do think that they have a purpose that we probably won't know. I'm, But I am also on the flip side surprised it wouldn't be in the diaries. Mm -hmm. 
I want to get yeah. my hands on one of those. Uh, there, there are some, um, my problem is that, uh, I wasn't able to find like originals. I found like paraphrases of some of the entries that were mm -hmm. written in the diary, but nothing like original. I wanted to like quote and say on here. Um, but the, yeah, this fact kind of leads me towards a paranormal, para, paranormal, para something, you know, Parasy like a psychosis or mm -hmm. paranormal, like outside influences or mental paranormal. illness. Ugh, it's tough. Like, I think overall, I think it's mental illness. Yeah. Um, and, but then, you know, the pipes protruding outside is fucking That's weird. That's us. Um, so I did find a little something, something regarding possession specifically in South Asia. Um, this is a quote from the Oxford bibliographies on a paper called possession by Frederick M. Smith, who says that the, um, the reasons for possession can be roughly divided into positive possession in which a spirit or a deity enters the body of an individual resulting in sudden personality changes that are culturally, culturally evaluated to be positive. Mm -hmm. um, and some of these possessions may be of a deceased family member or community member, which many uh, people regard as positive in these areas, specifically South India. There you so go. That's already, if that's already there, because when we think of possession here, it tends to be negative, but mm -hmm. if it's culturally ingrained in you that you can be positively possessed, mm -hmm. um, you may be more likely to buy this. The 11 things is sus. I don't know if um, the way that like spirits can travel in different cultures is a very big part of it. I wish I knew more about how they do it in India. Um, like for example, like Victorian death practices, they mm -hmm. cover their mirrors because they can travel through barriers and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. In other cultures, they're attracted to food left out like in South yeah. America. I wonder if travel by air is like a thing in India. Um it could very well be um, specifically with like the pipes coming in and out. Yeah. I thought I it was know. like more of a fire base. I don't know too much about Indian culture because I have not studied it, uh, it at school. It was just very glossed over, which is a shame because it seems terrifying when I read some of this. <laughs> this article or this like small introduction to possession in India um, is terrifying. We could do an entire episode about it. Yeah. So another thing that I didn't mention um, is that, like, as Lalit was being possessed by Bhopal, as he claims, um, a lot of the themes were about salvation mm -hmm. um, and bringing the family to salvation and doing things to make sure that their ancestors wouldn't be, like, harmed <clears throat> or disrespected. Yeah. Um, so that's where, like, all of these kind of strict rules and regulations came in. Um, but interesting. So I guess... That's the question, you know, where do you land? You think this is um, possession disguised as good possession, but is actually bad possession. I want to believe that just because it's the more fun thing. I'm sure if I dove into this um, with a biased research, I could make that argument. From what you presented here today, I would, I don't know, um, mental illness that's unchanging for 11 years is also sus because I feel like mental illness can adapt um, I think it did. I think the mental illness did adapt, which is why 11 to death. Yeah, themselves. I guess that's actually, that's actually, um, put me in my place. <laughs> so if we want to say like the mental illness thing, the fact that it did slowly adapt, um, but even then like mental illness that all of a sudden, well, that's not actually anything too strange because there are certain like mental illnesses that can like affect disorders that can just hit one day and it's 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're in forever unless yeah. it gets treated. Well, there's um, like I'll even play devil's avocado and take like a middle stance here and say that the family did believe that this was good and righteous possession of their father inhabiting their brother's body from time to time or like kind of every time at night, whatever. And through that was directing the family. And it was like 
they were getting positive results. It wasn't just snake oil. Everything yeah. that he was saying that they needed to do when they did it, good things happened. So it was like there was no reason for them to disbelieve. Yeah. And when you have that continuing over an 11 year span, and it probably like had ebb and flows and maybe like continue, maybe it would have big swings into the extreme and then like kind of roll backs and what have you, like you're, you're in that pattern of believing whatever this person says is true yeah. will happen and you have never been proven wrong 11 years is a long time to have your reality changed like that enough so that you a completely smart educated well-rounded person could look at a noose and say i'll put my head through it and survive and yeah think, it's like pavlov's dog every time he rang the bell he's like do this you'll get better grades mm-hmm. they did it got better grades mm-hmm. do this you'll feel better stop drinking and smoking and eating red meat. They felt better. Mm -hmm. All of that stuff. Yeah. It's, it would be easy to buy what you were selling and the desperation of like loss. I would say if someone came to me and for 11 years was like, I am being possessed by like your dead mom or your dead sister. You'd be surprised at like what you fucking reach for in Mm -hmm. grief. Um, Yeah. If, they, if somebody caught me at my lowest or at a dark moment, I could see maybe latching onto it. Um, well, yeah, I, he was there. This was there from the day Bhopal yeah. died. So yeah. from f- through all stages of grief and as time progressed with it, this was always there as the constant. Yeah, if – Specifically, too, like if someone came to me, my, my mom and my sister were both or, like organ donors and believing that like there could be some sort of genetic imprint left on organs. Um, if they came to me and they're like, hey, ever since I got this organ donation, I crave fucking Coke and cigarettes all the time. I'd be yeah. like, Jessica, like, yeah. you know what I mean? So there are parts of it where you can kind of buy into it. Um, I do think that I am just sad enough and looking for enough meaning in life that Maybe after 11 years, I, who knows, you know, that's Mm -hmm. a really long time to be brainwashed. Is that a nice word for it? That's a long time to be brainwashed. Yeah, I would absolutely 100% agree that that's exactly it. I think that this family unknowingly um, put their grief into a Mm -hmm. maybe not so great place. And they were like the frogs in the cold water and it just slowly got heated up to a point. Yeah. And they were dead. Exactly. I th- there are a lot of um, papers that swing this in the um, Lali is like an evil monster, evil genius who wanted to murder suicide his family. I don't think it's that. That's too simple of an answer. Having this documented 11 year brainwashing of a family who refuses to deal with trauma and grief mm-hmm. and death in a healthy way. Um, I think that's the real, that's the real story. Um, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it's it's less about um, I don't I don't know. I think the possession aspect is really fun. Um, I want I'll you know what I want to believe that because I think it's fun. But yeah, I think this is uh, whatever it is. It was a f- one family member with too much power unchecked. I would agree. And there you go. That's the Barari deaths, everybody. And, you know I. I'm going to give you a little round of applause because I sent this to you. I'm like, this might be fun. And then I did nothing to help. So, <laughs> I found um, this one. I found this one wildly interesting and also great timing. Everyone is ahead of the curve because Netflix is getting ready to do a documentary series on this. So snaps to us for being ahead of the game. Yes, it's going to be just like listeners. Brittany all over again. I know we're always, we're just a few months ahead. Um, so I'm also going to be curious as to what Netflix covers in this because um, I I dug deep into this and I was I I started believing that Lalit was a fucking serial killer and that he needs to go up on the serial killer board like you know yeah. um, and then the more that I dug into it the more uh, my opinion started to change so I'm I'm also interested I think I have enough or so little of an opinion on the motive or like the cause that I could be swayed either way. They could point out like, Oh, you know that Ted Bundy worked at a suicide hotline and helped people, but he was also a killer. Like he could have done good and bad things. I'd be like, yeah, sure. Or they could have been like, he was possessed. I'd be like, yep. Or if they're like, he was a serial killer. Like, yep. 
or this was mental illness. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, I really hope they dive into a supernatural aspect of it because those are always the most fun, but I could also see them like not wanting to turn off their audience either. Yeah. I don't think they would. I think the supernatural aspect is going to have to be left on your hands, Chelsea. Um, speaking of Netflix and this part would have been edited out, uh, because we, I made a flub in the episode that for (laughs) legal reasons, we have to delete (laughs) out. Yeah. Uh, But I do want to give a shout out to Brendan. He messaged, uh, fan of the podcast wanted to point out, um, inside job on Netflix. It's a comedy series, um, about shadow government. They talk about reptiles, things like that. Um, if you're a fan of last podcast or go to hell, which you're here, I assume, hopefully you, even if you don't like us, please subscribe to Patreon and give us your hate money. Um, <laughs> but thank you for sending that our way. Um, I'm always excited when people reach out. Um, yeah. I love when people talk to us. It makes me know they're actually I, listening. I assume that we talk to nobody, but my sister. I, uh, yeah, I, I actually think that as well. I only yeah. make episodes because I know that she's listening. Yeah. Um, Shout and out to my sister, Becca. <laughs> she out. listens to us on her two hour drive to shout do drop offs, custody drop offs. <laughs> shout, shout out. Fuck your baby daddy, but shout outs to you. Yeah. Also, shout outs to Kelly Holloran or Wildwood Owl on Etsy yeah. and Instagram, where you can buy dope ass fucking stickers. Our sticker pack is still out and up, which everyone should get before Spencer comes out. The Kirsten Stewart, Kristen Stewart as Diana movie that's coming out the first week of November. Mm-hmm. Um, make sure you get that sticker pack. It also has a free pretty sticker in there. You know how he is ahead Very of the cute. pop culture game. Um, nice. Also our individual stickers are up there and little enamel pin of the flame logo, which is so cute. Um, oh it's a nice pin too. It's adorable. It's not like, it. It's not like a flimsy, like button, like punch pin that you can yeah. make at home. No, it's like a legit pin. Um, also, if you want merch, and I'm going to be working on the design for the cult member, mm-hmm. I want to drop it by Halloween, but it might, we'll see. Because I want I mean, it to look like a university sweater. I want Hit it to me be up with ideas for it. That Over. might be good, or we yeah. can always commission someone to do it. Um, I I think we could manage it. I want it to look like a university pullover, like a Stanford University that would be pullover. Easy. Yeah, I have it say cult member. I just haven't decided what else I want. So check out for that. But you can find the link to what is it? Teespring. It's in our it's in our bio on it's Instagram. In, yeah, bio it's on good Instagram. Teespring. Yeah. Hashtag get, hashtag hashtag type of that. thing. Yeah, get that. Um, Click that link. Whatever that is. Um, and of course, most importantly, subscribe on Patreon, a dollar gets you in and we put out, um, bonus content that's completely unedited, unedited and too real on there. So, um, and then if you ever have an idea for something that you want to send our way, we can pop it into our Teespring, or if you want to just market your own stuff and sell it and make money, that's great. Send it to us so we can share it. We won't ask for any of the profits on that. Not a dime dog. Um, also we have a Facebook group and a discord group. You can find links in any of those play. I think discord links expire. So just ask for it and we'll give it to you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's all that. Um, I'm at Noel Fane on everything. That's Sith Lord on everything. And um, now more importantly, more than ever, hail Satan. Hail, po- hail the spirits that possess us all. Please improve my credit score. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> and goodbye. I hit end and then it didn't end. Now goodbye.